Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to see how the Mona Lisa might have looked in real life, as well as learn about the lady that Leonardo actually painted. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Moral Faces I transform historic portraits to see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historic recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. As I'm sure you're all aware, the Mona Lisa was created by Leonardo da Vinci from maybe around 1503 to 1517. He started the work in Florence, then in 1516 was invited to France by the French king, Francis I. And it's there that he continued the painting until his death a year later, in 1517, aged 67. However, this is the story of the woman behind the painting. Her name was Lisa del Giocondo. Lisa was born in 1479 into the Italian noble Gerardini family. Her family was old and aristocratic, but over time lost their influence. They were well off and lived comfortably, but not really wealthy. You see, they lived in the city of Florence and received their income from their farms. And at the time, Florence was one of Europe's largest cities, with many people who were far richer than them and many people who were far poorer than them. Her father's family came from Poggio and recently moved to the big city. He was a widower, having lost two wives to childbirth. Lisa was born to his third wife. And at one point, he owned or rented six farms that produced wheat, wine, olive oil, and livestock. Lisa was the eldest child of seven, so four girls and three boys, and it is thought she was named after a wife of her paternal grandfather. She was born and lived in the center of the city, right near the river Arno, but then at an early age, the family had to move to a rented property near Leonardo da Vinci's father because they could no longer afford the repairs on their first house when it was damaged. However, they still had a little country home in Poggio and they spent summers on another leased property in the country. So they were still well off enough to have multiple properties. In 1495, aged 15, Lisa married Francesco del Giocondo, a moderately successful cloth and silk merchant. But he was married twice before, so she became his third wife. What's interesting is we have her dowry, which was 170 florins and a farm. To put that into perspective, there are references that 200 florins could get you a residence in the city, 3,500 is the cost of a palace, an architect could make 100 florins a year, and a bank staff would range from 14 to 50 florins per year. Overall, her dowry was modest. We can speculate why they married. It seems it might have been for love since neither family was exuberantly wealthy. He could have married her for her family's aristocratic name, and she could have married him because his family was successful. In their early years of marriage, they lived a very middle-class life in shared accommodations, and it wasn't until 1503 that they got a house of their own. Like many financially comfortable residences, Francesco and Lisa were patrons of the arts. So at this time, Leonardo began to paint Lisa. It is thought that Francesco commissioned Leonardo for a portrait in celebration to their new child and house. Leonardo could have taken the private commission of Lisa because in 1503 he had no income. But then he had to postpone it for a new project called the Battle of Angari, which was a more valuable commission. And this one had a due date for 1505. 
When that was done, in 1506, Leonardo considered Lisa's portrait unfinished. He was not paid for the work and he did not deliver it. So he kept it and brought it to France with him, where he continued working on it privately. The couple continued their family and had a big one. They had five kids with one perishing as a baby. Plus, Francesco had another son from his first marriage, which Lisa helped to raise. Two of their daughters became nuns, and one of them died at the age of 18. The other one continued her career and became a well-respected convent member. Later, in Francesco's career, he was chosen to be a government official, and in 1538 or 1539, that's when Francesco died. He was maybe in his 70s or 80. One account says that Lisa died four years later, aged 63, or she lived until at least 1551 and then died in her early 70s. But when Francesco died, he willed her her dowry back and all the provisions and necessities she would need to live a comfortable life in widowhood. He said, Lisa has always acted with a noble spirit and as a faithful wife, wishing that she shall have all she needs. And that's just a little bit about Lisa of the Mona Lisa. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more historic recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you guys. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.